All right. In this problem, we are given the, uh, the dimensions of a house in this helpful little diagram here. Now, part A uh, of this problem tells us that a dollhouse has the scale of 1 12th of a normal house. Really? I feel like even for the largest dollhouses I've seen, that seems like a bit of an overestimation of their size, but all right. But, but we're assuming for a minute that a dollhouse uh, has this ratio of its length. So each, each length, each dimension of a dollhouse is going to be uh, a twelfth of those dimensions of that of a regular house. And part A of the question asks us to uh, find the volume of a dollhouse given this ratio and given the dimensions that were given in this little diagram here. All right, so the first thing we'll want to do is actually find the volume of an average house, or at least find the volume of a house as given by, uh, as given by this house, this particular house with its particular dimensions. So let's find out what that will be. Now, your first instinct might be to take advantage of the classic uh, formula for volume, length times width times height. And th true, that will work for the, uh, the lower section of the house, uh, but there's still this triangular roof area here that we'll have to account for in a different way. If you, if you break apart the house into little bits, then it, it's still pretty clear what we'll have to do here. If we just imagine that uh, the cross-sectional area of the house is going to be given by, let's call it big A. Let's say it's going to be equal to 12 meters times 20 meters. Okay, let's go with that. And this uh, square area here is going to be about 240 meters squared. So now that we have that, now it's even simpler to find a formula for the lower section of the house and the upper section of the house. Because uh, for the top area of the house, for instance, the, just the roof section of the house alone is essentially a triangular prism. So as long as you know the formula for uh, the normal height of a of a normal for the volume, or I guess area of a triangle, as long as you know the formula for the area of a triangle as one half times uh, the base times the height, then it basically just becomes a matter of accounting for the longer length of it as well. So the, the length of the base and the length of the, just the longer length of the house is already accounted for by the area we've calculated right there. So in other words, if I were to write a formula for the triangular prism of, of the base times height, and I guess let's call it length, then uh, we know that we can simplify the B and the L down into the A that I've calculated above. So uh, this can be simplified or rewritten, or it can be rewritten as one half times the cross-sectional area times the height, where the height, where h, is going to be uh, 3.0 meters. We'll also want to have a formula for the, the lower, uh, more rectangular section of the house as well. The more, I guess you could call it more of a block shape, a rectangular prism. And it's going to be the same idea. We have, it's going to be like uh, the length times width times height formula that we all know and love, that we've all memorized back in basic geometry class. Except, once again, two of those dimensions we can shorten down to the area, the cross-sectional area format we have here. So the, uh, so the volume of the lower part of the house can just be written as the cross-sectional area times the height. Except it's important to note, very, very important to note, uh, I can imagine some people might not realize this and it might screw some people over, uh, is that the height we're talking about in this case is not the same height that we're talking about with the rooftop. So with the roof section, we have a height of three meters, but with the rectangular base section of the house, we have a height of 6.0 meters. So I'm gonna add a little apostrophe symbol to the H, to call, uh, let's call it H prime, to represent the fact that we're dealing with a different unit here. 
So the total volume of the house is going to be the sum of these two components. So it's going to be one half times uh, the area times the height plus the area again times a height prime. Uh, let's simplify this just a bit just because it's always, it's always good to simplify your formulas to make them easier for other people to read and copy. So I'll take I'll, since there's an a in both of these terms, I'll take the a out uh, so that the other uh, formulas are in this little parentheses here. The other the other terms are in little parentheses here. This is going to be a times uh, one half of h or h over two plus h prime. And now we have this much more condensed version of uh, the formula for the volume of the house. Now uh, you can just plug in the values that we have already given above. You can plug in uh, 3.0 meters for h, plug in 6.0 meters for h prime, and the area we calculated above for the cross-sectional area of the house here. And you'll get an answer, you'll get a volume for the house of 1800 cubic meters. Okay, so now we have the volume of a regular house. Now we want to find the volume of a dollhouse, given the fact that, again, uh, the dimensions of a dollhouse have a ratio of 1 to 12 uh, when compared to a real house. So, for all this, all right, so this is just part A here. So the volume of a dollhouse, then, is going to be equal to this volume, the volume for uh, the total house multiplied by one twelfth, uh, which is shortening down every single component of these dimensions here. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you think of a house as a three-dimensional shape, and a three-dimensional shape is what we're dealing with here, it is what we found the volume for already, you can tell because of the cube unit right above the M, uh, that means that if every single length of the, if every dimension of the house is going to be shortened to a twelfth, then we'll want to multiply one twelfth by uh, the components for the volume in every dimension along the x axis, along the y axis, along the z axis. So basically, we'll be taking this volume here and we'll be multiplying it by one twelfth three times. So let's take the volume here, uh, 1800 cubic meters, and multiply it by 1 12th cubed. So if we cube that entire little ratio here uh, and multiply it by our volume for the house, then that will give us the volume of a dollhouse, which I can write, which uh, plugging into your calculator gets you about 1.0 uh, cubic meter. And that is the volume of a dollhouse. Part B asks us to do something basically the same thing, except for a miniature house, they call it. Or a, a house, a dollhouse meant to fit within a dollhouse. And uh, so let's call this V mini for the volume of the dollhouse. And the ratio we're given here is that uh, a mini house is has a ratio of 1 to 144. Of a real houses so for every one miniature house that's, that fits in about 100 or 144 mini houses fit in a single real house so we're going to be using basically the same process let's just take the volume that we calculated for a regular house and multiply it by that ratio or 1 over 144 and cube it uh, to indicate because of the fact that we're working in three dimensions here and this gets us a volume for the miniature house of about 6.0 times 10 to the negative fourth power of cubic meters. And that is about the volume of a miniature house.